All right, this is gonna bring us on to our blue cards. First up is Arcane Subtraction. One in the blue for an instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus oh until end of turn, and it has Learn. Yeah, I like this one. So this, these these set of cards, like the negative four or negative X cards, always play a little bit better than you might think. Plus, when you're pairing it with, in this set, with red cards or green cards, which you're going to, <laughs> uh, you're going to have a lot of power on your, in your creatures. And these cards play well with high power creatures, so you can eat your opponent's creatures. Um, we've seen variants of this card where they like draw a card or investigate or like draw you some kind of card. And this is obviously the same thing with learning, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so if you can set this up to be like a two mana two for one, that's very good. Yes. I can see this actually being one of blues better commons. Yeah, that's a, that's a fairly hot take, but it seems kind of reasonable to me. Um, I, I can't see myself going higher than a C. If you have no lessons, this card is not good, but well, if you have no lessons, you still rummage, which is not the worst thing, right? You're, you're almost drawing a card sometimes. I remember right? that the rummage does, does exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go C minus on this. I, I'm going to go C plus on this. Maybe maybe wow, it's hot take, that's, but that, I, I like this one. That is high. <laughs> it's just going to play really nicely with both the red cards and the, the green cards, I think. Yeah. Next up, we've got a Burog Befuddler. <laughs> one and a blue for a 2 1 flash. When Burog Befuddler enters the battlefield, Turn creature and opponent controls gets negative one negative O until end of turn. So not quite the negative two we're used to on these, but a bit of a bigger body. Right. So it itself can ambush a one power creature. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that makes this quite a bit worse. Like this can't ambush two ones itself. Like it's not doing the. I would. I think I like the one power minus two minus O better than this. Right, so it's it's worse on the effect you're getting, but the like the floor of it is higher because uh, it's a two mana two one. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure w w like how that pans out, which one's actually better. That's it. I think this is still like a C. This is a fine card that it's sometimes going to get you a little bit of value, right? Yeah, I, again, I'm I'm lower on this. I think this is like feels like C minus D plus to me. This feels this is like the. To to use the R's, this feels replaceable to me, and that, that's, mm, yeah. that's no, I think that's C yeah. minus D plus. That's not C to me. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe maybe C minus range is, is more appropriate, but um, I'll give it a C. I'll be next. Curate to is next. This is one in a blue for an instant. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest back on top of your library in any order, and then you draw a card. Hmm. So it's uh, deliberate is back, <laughs> right? It's like uh, surveil deliberate almost. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, all the all the little, uh, you know, marks you, you want to give this for, for playing well with Magecraft, but overall, not a super impactful spell. Like, I can see a, a, a deck where you have, like, nine Magecraft creatures, and you're just like, oh, I just want any can any spell that cantrips, mm -hmm. and this is going to be good there, right? Um, but overall, like, you're not playing this for value or anything. You're not like, ooh, two mana, <laughs> two mana cantrip, great in my deck, you know? So, I think it's mostly going to be, like, a D... You're probably not going to play this card, but with a high enough density of spellcraft, I could see you like being like, "Okay, I actually want this." Or magecraft, sorry. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm I'm in for D on this card. All right, next up, we've got reject. This is Lorna Blue for an instant. Counter target creature or planeswalker spell. Next controller pays three. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it in its owner's grave. I don't know. I've seen a lot of people be very excited about this card because it's, like, it's, it's manly. Like, so you, awesome. so you, like, you don't like this card? I think it's fine. Like, Manalik, Manalik is much better when you have a lot of other things to do on turn two, right? And like a constructed deck. Like, Manalik Limited is not that special of a card, right? And especially when it's can't even Manalik the big Prismari spells, that's pretty bad. I think this is mostly just worse essence scatter. Right, Essence Scatter is good though. Yeah, but it's not like you know amazing, right? Yeah, this is probably. This I think is this is quite like bad. C minus, or you think it's worse than that? Yeah, C C minus D plus. Like, yeah, it's just it's 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 almost like um, I feel a little bit disdainful, strokey, but at the same time, probably a bit worse than that. So I, I'm going to go C minus on this one. Next up is Resculpt. One in the blue for an instant. Exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. So there's two two things going on with this card. Or I guess maybe three. The first is you're mm -hmm. targeting your own stuff. Ideally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And the second thing is that this works well if you've got treasure tokens. You turn your treasure token into a 4 4 at instant speed. And you can turn your 1 1 fractals into 4 4s at instant speed. Boom, baby. And that's all, also the, the, um, not including the ways that you just like, you know, your opponent goes to kill your thing with a removal spell and you respond with this by saying, okay, now it's a 4 4. I, I yeah, this... think most blue decks want a copy of this. Yeah, I think it'll be, you know, I've heard the comparison of Angelic Ascension right. from M21. Um, I think it's worse than that. Mine, having flying, flying is a flying big was huge, knock, right? But, but, but that card yeah, was even, good. Yeah. Even just ambushing, like, so you play like a one drop, right? And you ambush their two drop with this. That's not a bad deal, right? Especially if that one drop, like, you know, learns or something or, like, has some value in the grave, which are a few of those things. Um, yeah, I think just the flexibility of this card and, like, the gotcha potential of, like, yeah. sometimes just eating their creature... Using this is like, okay, you remove my creature, I get a 4-4, four, four, a little bit of value there. Mage Craft. I think this is like a nice little glue card, so I think this is going to be just like a a, a C. I could see it yeah. being, you know, moving up. Is this, Oh, so a lot, I see, I'm seeing yeah. some comparisons in chat to Raven Form. This is a much different card than Raven Form. Yes, yeah, right? not like, even, they're just, they're just different. Well, sir, sir, first of all, one was not playable. And one is playable, so there's that. Well, it's it's good, <laughs> it's good to explain why. I yeah, suppose. yeah, no, no. yeah. I mean, Raven form, like you never wanted to cast that on your own creature, right? And it was it was a sorcery, which made it much much different, yeah, right? Yeah. This is essentially so. a combat trick with a lot of different applications. Right, right. Um, where... And yes, yeah, sometimes you do the Raven form mode of like you kill their mythic dragon and it's like all right you know so. right yeah yeah the, the the very very small percent chance where you would rather them have a four four than some other creature yep yeah i think that, that all adds up to a card like i said i think if i end a draft and i'm in a blue deck and i don't have a resculpt i think i'm sad i think i'll be okay with it i i feel i still think it's like a c level card yeah but I think it, see. it's on a it's a role, yeah. a role player so. <laughs> all right next up here we got soothsayer adept this is one in a blue for a one three uh, it has one in the blue, tap, discard a card, then draw a card. Or the the other way, the, the loot. Draw, oh, draw sorry, a... yeah, draw a card, discard a card. Uh, yeah, this is whatever. Okay, D, yeah. D plus. Yeah, like, sure, mm, whatever. I mean... You need a two drop, this maybe... can be your two drop. I could, like... You know, I think these, some these... blue, I think blue red and blue green are both, like, sort of interested in some flood insurance or whatever, or, I don't know, getting a spell in your yard. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, like... Looting is infinitely better when you don't have to pay mana for it. Like it's so so much better. Like Merfolk Looter compared to this card, it's not it's not close. Yeah. Even we saw um, in the last set with the one uh, the Pilfering Hawk, paying one mana for that was painful. You know what I mean, right? And it's just like <sighs> these cards tend to just fall by the wayside. Now I can see factors where it's like okay, maybe the set is a bit slower, and you just want yeah, like you said, some ways to power through but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go like c minus on that d plus all right best common in the set here alex yeah i'm this this is in contention uh frost trickster two in a blue for a two two bird wizard with flying when it enters the battlefield you tap target creature and opponent controls that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step this is one of the one like, this is one of those cards where you have to read it you're like okay what did i miss no it just does it yeah it's just no it's it just, just flying it just does, yeah it's just does the thing you want it to do yeah. uh so Frost Links varies from, like, medium to good. Mm -hmm. Attached flying to it, it just, like, skyrockets it. <laughs> in, in, you know, or, sorry, how about this? How about it's a three-mana 2-2 two -two Chillbringer? Does that do it for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, like... that's a good way to put it, too. Uh, it stabilizes you. It, it, this, it, is a, uh, this is a B, you know. I think. Uh, yeah, this is a B. Could even just be B+. Plus, yeah. Right? Yeah, that... is, like, I, I don't I think be... there's a better common in the set. I think this is yeah, right. I was going to say, I would be surprised if we encounter a common in that, you know, in a reasonable span that we, we want to take over it. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. All right, next up, we've got Pop Quiz. Pop Quiz is two and a blue for an instant. Draw a card, learn. Yep. Um, and I think this is good. Both both blue green and blue red like this card, I think. But I think blue red more than blue green. Mm -hmm. Uh I, yeah it's hard to evaluate but i'm, I'm coming in hot because i, I want to come in hot on the <laughs> there's a lot of ways to learn and so i'm coming in hot on the lessons i think the lessons are going to be very high picks and then that in turn i think makes this 
a higher pick. This is like uh, probably a C in my mind. Solid yeah, it's kind of, I'm never giving this a C plus. I don't think. So here's something interesting to think about with the learn cards. Is it like how quickly do you run into diminishing returns? Do you think? Well, I definitely think. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to run into a situation where I. If I, I don't want more learn cards than lessons. I don't want to run into a situation where my third learn card doesn't have a target. Right, and you just have to rummage. Well, you, you, yeah, you get to rummage, which isn't the worst, but you'd like not to. <laughs> yes. Um, so I think they do. And that's why I think this is, you know, this is fine. This is not uh, one of the better ones. Like, I think in blue-green, you want the, the green one that ramps you uh -huh. 10 out of 10 times over this. And, so the, and they're both competing for the same CMC. Yeah, my, my only thought here is that, like, I think this is, like, a fine one. Um, and mind you, none of the learn cards are particularly impressive in right. unless, unless it's, like, rare or uncommon, right? So it's, like, if that's the case and they do have diminishing returns, and, like, it sounds like they do, the ones that are, like, on the margins, like, this is fine, probably aren't going to get played that often. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this kind of card? Yeah. It, like, especially, like, you're saying with the ramp one, you're going to want that one. Yes, I, what you want that because it contributes to the game plan, and this right, right, this maybe contributes to blue red a little bit. I don't know. I don't think it also contributes to blue green's game plan a lot. I, we're talking a lot about this card. I think it's a C. I think it's fine. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think it's more. I think the the topic of how many learns you want is is more interesting than the card itself. But yeah, yeah. my my Agreed. current feeling is I don't want more learns than lessons. Yeah, that's fair. That's my my hope. And I'm sure we'll we'll figure it out very quickly. <laughs> basically, yeah. Uh, next right. up is Vortex Runner. This is two and a blue for a two, three human wizard. As long as you control eight or more lands, Vortex Runner gets plus one, plus oh, and can't be blocked. So this is one of the two payoffs at common that exist for the blue, green, eight land deck. And it's fine. Like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like uh, just a bit under fine, I think, right? I think this card's good. Oh, okay. Sell me on it. I think this is... So as you were talking about, like, blue-green, you want to get to eight lands, but then there's not a lot of things that, like, you're actually casting for eight mana. And I mm -hmm. think this one and the green one are both sort of the, like, good on turn two, good on turn ten type deals in those decks, or good on turn three, good on turn ten, as is the case for Vortex Runner. Three mana, two, three is obviously just fine, but then once you get to eight mana, this is how you win. Like, you just go, all right, you're dead in a couple turns unless you deal with this. I think this is... yeah. I think in blue, this is a secret... Blue-red doesn't care at all about this card. This is a secret blue-green-gold card, or not-so-secret blue-green-gold card, but I think in that deck it's good. Oh, I just realized what this reminds me of. It's the, um... There's that one from Rivals of Ixalan, where if you have the City's Blessing, it's, uh, it's unblockable, and yeah, that, that card is pretty good. But that right? also had Hexproof. <laughs> oh, did it really? Never mind. Yeah. City's <laughs> Blessing yeah, gave it Hexproof. I completely forgot about that, yeah. yeah. That makes it quite a bit different, but still, it, it gives some more thing. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start this as like a C, but maybe I'm underestimating just like how quickly you get to eight lands in these decks. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna get there. I think yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna C plus on this, but okay, yeah, I'm, fair probably enough. just quite a bit quite a bit higher on the deck in general. All right. Next up, we've got Serpentine Curve. This is a three and a blue for a sorcery. Create a zero zero fractal token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is. One plus the total number number of instances of sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. Oof, weird. Yes, this is one of the few things that cares about spells in the yard and spells mm -hmm. in exile. Um, it doesn't quite fit with blue green. I think it, it might have a home in, in blue red in a way. And also, you sort of have to give. It's just going to be about like once we get to playing with the cards, understanding like how good are the things that are creatures but trigger magecraft. You know, the fact that this does that in blue red, like is a creature, but also triggers your magecraft stuff, I think is there's value there. I just don't know what that value is. Yeah, I think this is mostly just very filler, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no it, it reminds me it reminds me a lot of the card from War of the Spark, where it was like blue red. Uh, you have mass equal to the amount of uh, things in your grave, the instant sorceries in your grave, which turned out to be very, very poor. But at the same time, this is it, it's got a higher floor than that card. Yeah, um, it's a much, I think, a much higher floor. Like the fact that um, that card was uh, an aura if you had already amassed. The fact that this is one plus, I think, also matters. Like uh -huh. there, there's there's differences there. I agree. This is like a D plus. This is not anything. Yeah, like this is we yeah we don't have to talk about this card for too long. This is like, 
you know, I'd be surprised if this card was a card you ever actively wanted. Waterfall Aerialist is next. Three and blue for a three one flyer with ward two. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a nice little flyer. You know, I'm like my my problem with these cards is always that like they don't block very well to turn and they come down. I want my specifically my four drop to block well the turn and comes down often. Yeah, um, this is this has a four drop problem. It's fine. This is yeah, a C, it's, C it's minus. A, it's a C. Yeah, C minus. I could. I like. I'm gonna give it a C. I mean, I, I can see it being C minus as well. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got Burian Books. So this is born a blue for an instant. This card or this spell costs two less to cast if it targets an attacking creature. And it says put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. Hmm. I'm I'm in for this card. I'm in, I'm in for uh, one copy of this probably. Like also blue. Like this is. <laughs> This is Blue's removal spell, folks. I don't know what yeah. to tell you. Like, it's totally lost. But we've, but we've also, but it's a split card because totally lost is whatever. Sometimes that's good and playable. But we've also seen the three mana, you know, put target attacking or block or target attacking creature on top of its owner's library. Or and this is too deep, which is a better. Yeah. Um, I think the first copy is like a C. Yeah. This also is nice because you can get a. Th third mana discount if you do have like in, in prismari if you have the, the yeah yeah the drake right so it becomes yeah, so like two can mana two mana that's pretty sweet yeah 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 i'd, I'd give it a solid c yeah first uncommon is symmetry sage single blue for an o2 human wizard with flying and has mage craft target creature you control has base power two until end of turn hmm. i'm not i'm not about this card personally uh, some some yes. ho hoops to jump through for a one mana two two flyer. Oh, well, but yeah, I mean you can also make your other fractals larger too. Like that's that's kind of nice. I guess. <laughs> I'm more in for this card. I mean, than it's a not. one mana card, so it already gets the, of course, the Nicolich yeah. bump, you know. But <laughs> how can I how can I deny a one mana card? Um. So it doesn't take too much. Like let's say you let's say you have access to eleven spells in your in your deck and your sideboard and your whatever, right? And this is gonna be a two power flyer, you know, fifty percent of the time, and then make your other thing. Yeah, actually, you know, I'm talking through it. It's not that good. It's not, it's probably, it's <laughs> yeah, it's not that good. good. This is like a I think it's like a D. D? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. I don't look. Just give this a grade and let's move on. C. Minus. <laughs> Great. Perfect. I'm so glad. Right. I'm so glad we spent the time. Next up, we've got Mercurial Transformation. This is one and a blue for a lesson sorcery. Until end of turn, target non-land permanent loses all abilities and becomes your choice of a blue frog creature with base power and toughness one one, or a blue octopus creature with base power and toughness four four. What is this card? It's not. It's not good. That's what it is. This feels like when you're gonna pick up like for free. And then, like, it's nice to have that option <laughs> at some point, but, like, it just seems so rare that you're ever going to want to cast that card. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I this just, was, like, this did, like, I was like, oh, this is, like, a more flexible square up or whatever, and then I realized it was sorcery, so I just don't think this is a card I'm ever interested in. Yeah. <laughs> you can, like, attack with a... <sighs> yeah, you, tur you can turn your treasure into a 4-4, four -four, I guess. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it's almost like a square up that you can, like, go tutor at some point. I think this is, like, you're, again, you're going to be happy to take this on the wheel and, like, add it to your wish board, as, as it were, and be like, okay, cool. That's that's another tool in my arsenal, but you're never taking this highly. So, yeah, I guess like, you can I, finish stuff on. off post blocks, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm going D Oh, minus. true, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to D on this one. Yeah. Test of Talents is next. One on a blue for an instant counter target instant or sorcery spell, more relevant than normal for an negate. Mm -hmm. Search its controller's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that spell and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Boo! Hmm. Terrible. So I kind of like... Oh, you, you say boo to this, eh? Uh, I think so. Mm. So it's like negate. Because, like, you, you remember, there's not too many enchantment-based removal spells. It's all pretty much... Yeah. Like, it's just negate. But it's negate that lets you see their hand and their full deck. Which just matters. just so I'm clear, the yeah. second so if they do have two copies of a card, yeah, this sec you have to do the second part right. You have to then go. There's no up two. You have to then go search and then you have to exile them and then they get to draw a card. Search. Uh... Oh, only if it was in their hand. 
Only, yeah, only if it's in their hand. Okay. That is very narrow, but that is potential downside. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, consider that... I guess they, I guess it doesn't matter. It just, like, loots it. Like, they're yeah, not up a card. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Um, this is, this is going to be, like, a C in this set. Great. Yeah. I think, it, I think it's perfectly... This is, but this... No, wait, hold on. This is... Yeah. You think this is better than the creature mana leak? Yes. Because this is going to counter things that matter a lot. And that's going to counter something sometimes. Huh. When you cast this, it'll be more impactful than when you cast the mana leak. Yeah. Okay. I'm having tr. I think I will just have to wait to see what the composition of decks are. Yeah. Like, I recognize we're going to be a yeah. little spell heavier than normal with Magecraft. Yeah. But I don't know how much. And I don't know if that's true for all five colleges. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to start just a little bit higher. I'm down with C. That's fine. All right. Cool. Next up, we've got Kelpie Guy. This is a cool one. This is Tuna Blue for a 2-2. Two, two. Has two abilities. Oh, we we missed one. one. Divide by oh, zero. Oh, sorry. We missed one. I'm at... Yeah. Uh, divide by zero is up next. We've got two and a blue for an instant. Return target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand and then learn. So you can't bounce tokens, basically, is the idea. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Oh, man. This is... So... It's, it's like bounce something, Espe draw a card. Especially if you think about copying it in Prismari. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Use the... Like, pay, Spend the two, the two mana spell that copies the thing, then this. Mm -hmm. Then you're bouncing, that's five mana, bounce two things, double learn at instant speed. Yeah, and like, even even just like rummaging on the second one, so you don't uh -huh. have anything, like that's still a good value. Wow, yeah, this is, this is really good. <laughs> I read it the first time and I was like, oh yeah, it's pretty good. But now thinking about it, it's really good. Yeah. This is like a B. I think it's a B, yeah. Yeah, this could be a B plus. But yeah, let's let's go with B. Next up is this is one of my favorite cards. Kelpie Guide. Tuna Blue for a 2-2 <laughs> two, two beast. Has two abilities. The first is tap, untap another target permanent you control, which just baseline. This is just better than you think it is. In the mm -hmm. first couple weeks, you're so many people are gonna just attack into your yeah. <laughs> tap four four, and then you go boop, untap it, and eat yep. your attacker. <laughs> so that's great. It ramps you, right? Um then the second ability is an eight mana payoff. Tap to tap target permanent, but only if you control eight or more lands. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it I, does I really like things. this card. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't quite ramp you in the way you want. In, right, in, in blue-green, blue but yeah. blue-red doesn't yeah, care. Blue-red's happy to have a little mana. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is... What do you want to go... Man, what do you want to give this one? Like a B minus? I think I'm just going straight B. This card's really Yeah, good. I can see it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle on B minus, but I can see it. Yeah. yeah. All right, next up, we've got Mentor's Guidance. This is two and a blue for a sorcery. When you cast this spell, copy it if you control a Planeswalker, Cleric, Druid, Shaman, Warlock, or Wizard. Scry one, then draw a card. Do you, have uh, any, did you do any research on, on these <laughs> I types? I sure did. I uh -huh. sure did, and it seems there are many, many, many Cleric, Druid, Shaman, Warlock, or Wizards in Strixhaven. And so, like, basically, if you control a creature, it's very likely it's one of these ones. Um... This is going to be divination, like scry two divination a lot Let's of the time. With the multiverse, right? Of. With magecraft doubling with up, double side. magecraft. That's really right. cool. Yeah, uh, still, you know, still just a, a divination, but a divination that digs you. Like, you know, what, how good it does feel when you cast a behold the multiverse. We, we know that feeling, and I think this is probably going to get a little bit of a boost. Like, I don't know, I don't have a gut feeling of how good it is to like get a double magecraft sugar, but it might just be very, very good. Like, imagine. There's yeah. like two things, and they're even mm -hmm. just marginal. Well, you get two triggers. Yeah, that sounds really good. I think this is a B minus. Ooh, that's that's spicy. I think that this is, is spicy. This seems I'll very do good it. to me. I'll come up there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This card solve the equation. Two and a blue for a sorcery. Search your library for an instant or sorcery card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. I was watching one of Ben's. Uh, practice drafts that he was doing on stream yesterday mm -hmm. and he drafted some nuts blue red deck and he had like 
two mystical archives that they get time warp and um yeah what's it called um like a, a wrath maybe no we had the the storm card the oh mine's desire the, sorry, mine's desire too so <laughs> i think your mystical archive cards may uh impact whether or not you want to play this a little bit more than than normal but i do think generally like this generally seems slow but i think this might be a set for it yeah so i think that um i think this card is narrow mm-hmm like you said the mystical archive cards definitely push it to being better than not especially because some of them are rats so like if you can search for your wrath you catch you know it catches you up from where you were when you spent three mana to do nothing um but also in like a blue red deck like like you were saying with what ben was drafting this like when your thing you're doing is trying to cast your magma opus or trying to cast your seven mana spell you can do that that's you're going to have access to that right so I think I like this card quite a bit. Like, it's, it's not... It's one you want to get past. It's kind of, like... Reminds me a bit of, um, like, all the cards needed for spider spawning, where it's like, ooh, this is the piece of the puzzle, right? This mm-hmm. is what I need it, right? Um, so I think it's, like, a build around C+. Plus, or, sorry, Synergy C+. Plus. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I think I think you're actually going to play this card a little more often. Man, I thought this card was instant and sorcery at first, and that just... <laughs> that's oh, just wild. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that'd be way, way too good. Next up... We got Wormhole Serpent. So this is four and a blue for a three five. It's an uncommon. Uh, three blue, four mana. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. It's pretty pretty darn good in blue green, my friend. Mm, yeah. <laughs> get those giant fractals in, baby. That's yeah, just, get them in. It, this card seems like it has to die. And it's just like. This is Ashiok fairly, Skulker Plus, right? That's just It's fairly beefy too. Yeah. Right? Like 3 5 is not like that's a good blocker in this set from what we've seen. Yeah, right. Eight mana win the game. I this this card feels like it must be dealt with or you're just gonna lose. And it and it blocks yeah. the turn it comes down. I don't know. I think this card's good. It is a little bit slow ish, right? Um maybe it's like a secret quandrix card or whatever like i don't know if i care about this in blue red that much yeah probably not as much i really i I really like it in blue green yeah i'm gonna give it a c plus i think yeah i think i'm gonna go b minus on this all right and our last blue uncommon is snow day so it's a four blue blue for an instant tap up to two target creatures those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step draw two cards then start a card I think this is again the, a lot of these feel like binary <laughs> like i don't think blue green cares about this at all but i think blue red likes this i think blue green likes it a decent amount right like the the tap down effects often play well with big green creatures big fractals i guess i just don't anticipate that deck being tempo-y and so i don't hmm. think the first line of text doesn't matters that much and then the you're not actually up a card in the draw to discard part so and that deck wants both lands and spells. So, I don't know. I'm less excited about this in blue-green. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think it's still going to be pretty darn good in both. Like, I think blue-green and blue-red both have the cast big things thing going on, right? Mm-hmm. And this is, like, kind of either, like, it's a, it's a big-ish thing, but also bridges the gap. I, I like this card quite a bit. I, I'd give this one a C+. All right. C+, yeah. plus sounds good. Our first rare is, ooh, multiple choice. This card's so good. X and blue for a sorcery. If X is one, you scry one, then draw a card. If X is two, you can choose a player. They return a creature they control to its owner's hand. If X is three, you make a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. And if X is four or more, you do all of the above. Ooh, this one's so good. Like, so you're, unless, if you can, unless you really need to, you're probably not You really need that four mana 4-4. yeah. You're gonna do this for five x. Oh, x. Sorry, x equals four. Five man altogether, and that's four four draw a card, bounce something of their choice. Obviously, but bounce still. their worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a little awkward if they have an ATB trigger, they get back. Like. Yeah, that is. But, it, but it's a may. But it's a may. You may choose. Card's good. This card's like a. This is a B plus. B plus. Yep, I agree. Yep. All right. Next up, we've got Dream Strix. This is two and a blue for a bird illusion 3-2 flyer when dream that strix becomes the target of a spell sacrifice it when it dies you learn i think i'm into that yeah nothing nothing to complain about i mean 
A bounce, Other than it dying. <laughs> a bounce spell or a combat trick is now a removal spell for this, but then you go find a lesson. Right, and actually worth noting too that like, you know, bounce spell, uh, combat trick, whatever, a lot of those have learn on them. So it'll uh, it'll fizzle your opponent's learn. Like they won't get to learn, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's a little interesting little uh, wrinkle in this too. So yeah, overall, super solid card. Just, I think a solid B minus probably. Yeah, B minus sounds good to me. Yeah. Ingenious Mastery is two and a blue X for a sorcery. You may pay two and a blue rather than pay this spell's mana cost. If the two and a blue cost was paid, you draw three cards, then an opponent creates two treasure tokens, and they scry two. If that cost wasn't paid, you just draw cards. So can be a big draw spell for you, or you can just pay two and a blue to draw three. You pay three mana, draw three, then an opponent makes two treasures and scries two. Yeah, it's really interesting. So I think you're you're basically never casting this early like you're never casting this on turn three because no. giving your opponent two treasures is like too too great of a cost but i can see in the late game you actually do use that alternative mode of just three when it's like all right well opponent's kind of you know ahead on board i just need to like draw three cards and then play something else and giving them like two treasures and a scry is not the worst thing and then if the board's stable you can draw like you know four cards or whatever yeah, I think this one's not that great, but it's 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 passable, right? If you if you your deck wants a place to put a lot of mana, which the blue decks sent seem yeah, to want to Yeah, I kind of think both decks you know? want a big spell like this. Yeah, I don't know. That I'm, I'm kind of in this, for this. I don't know if this is one of the better things to, <laughs> to be casting. You know? Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's like a it's like a you know a B minus. I think it's a B minus. Yep, that's exact. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm at on it as well. All right, next up, we've got another lesson. This is Tuna Blue, uh, Teachings of the Archaics. So this is, if an opponent has more cards in hand than you, you draw two cards. Draw three cards instead if an opponent has at least four more cards in hand than you. So, Divination, uh, if they have more cards in hand, and sometimes it's more than that. Which is nice, because you'll know <laughs> when you want to get this if mm -hmm. they have more cards in hand, right? You're never going to get this if, uh, if they don't have more cards in hand than you do. <laughs> This, this is a high... I think all the rare lessons are high picks. Uh, yeah, like, the, the good ones. There's some that are just, like, very constructed sure, sure, sure. niche sideboard things. But, like, these, like, ones that actually do something for limited, yeah, I agree. They, these ones and the um and the token makers, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this, this does nothing if the opponent has less cards than you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But whatever. I, I, I think this will be... Yep. Next up is Arc Mage em Emeritus. Two blue blue Emeritus, for a 2-2 two, yeah. two human wizard with Magecraft draw card. Yup. Yeah, it's like, uh, like, again, this is, if they untap with it, <laughs> you're, you're in for a world of hurt. Uh, it's, it's kind of got the Beast, beast Whisperer vibe mm -hmm. a little bit, or it's like, all right, that's, that's a big problem. Yeah, this one's good. This one's really good. Um, it's a B, B plus. B plus. Yeah, I think so. All right, bring us home here. All right, you got Tempted by the Auric. This is one blue, 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 four mana in total for a sorcery. For each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value three or less. So early in the game, if you just go four mana, steal your three drop, that's pretty good. That's pretty painful for that them. Is, like, all right. That's an undersell, <laughs> but yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then even later in the game, it's not that bad because like you have this isn't like uh they choose you know you get to choose which one you want to take and so you can take a flyer you can take a value creature like a, like a good magecraft uh creature right that's cheap oh uh, i think this one's pretty good this, this set seems to be littered with a fair number of like uh what's it called like small creatures that have abilities right not just power and toughness mattering right all these utility creatures that's that's the term i'm looking for right and, and tokens this, yeah and tokens. And, you still have four and, you could, and you could copy this? I don't know. I'm a huge connive of connive concoct <laughs> fan. Like, I think four mana steal a small thing is still quite impactful. Uh, I think this is really good. Yeah, I think one of the things I'm noticing about this set is really cool. I mean, both you and I have, have done this. As we've talked about cards, like, the gears just turn. We're like, ooh, and you can do this, and you can do this. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I would give this a, a B plus. Yep, I I, agree. I I'd even just go A minus with this. I think. Like, yeah, I think sure. Mana cost is a bit prohibitive, but I, I'd give it a minus. Deal. All right, that's blue. Uh, 